Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome, everybody. Welcome today. And I'm coming to you once again with another lovely word. I hope you've been having a good uh, a good week. Amen. This September. Um, sorry for a bit of a delay. But anyway, now I'm up and I'm running and I'm live. Amen. So just be ready with your notepad, your pen and all that kind of thing. Your ears be ready to receive. Amen. Because I'm going to be sharing a lovely word as you saw, uh, as I said there, on destiny. Amen. So you're going to see what's destiny about. And like I always say, this word, when this word comes to you, realize that it's a spirit word. So it causes things to happen. Amen. So just be ready to receive. And happy birthday to my brother. Today is my brother Shane's birthday. So I just want to give a, a happy birthday message to him. And God bless him with many more good years. And may he walk in the destiny which God is calling for. Amen. So, thank you, Jesus, for today. Thank you for the hearers, even as they hear, as they watch this live, or they watch this delayed. I thank you, Father God. Just touch your people, speak to them out there, let them be blessed and ignited. May they see the destiny which you plan for them come to pass. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so destiny. So, what is destiny? Like, uh, maybe. You might have your own thoughts, whatever destiny is. Some people, they call it fate. That's like a, a term used in the world. But let me just explain what destiny is. Destiny is like, or it is. Let me not say it is like. Destiny is the destination which you have been set out to get to. So, it's your destiny. Like how you say destination. So, like if you're on a journey, let's say if you... Uh, traveling to America, something like that, or wherever you traveling to Swaziland, Pakistan, India, wherever you're going, uh, like if you're flying or you're traveling by bus, however, but that place is the destination. So your air ticket or your bus ticket or whatever, or the road you're taking, it is. it will be telling you how far you are away from your destination, right? And um, like once you get on that plane, you leave and your destination is is that country, whatever it is, isn't it? So that is your destiny. Like if you have an air ticket to go to America, that's your destination. If you are driving on the road to uh, South Africa, that's your destination. Or wherever it is, that's your destination. So it's like that place is your destiny. You get this? So it's like it's the place where you are destined to get to, where it's pre-planned for you to get there, pre-planned. When you get on the flight, the pilot will tell you, welcome aboard, this flight is going to take how long and we will, we will get you to your destination at such and such a time. So you are destined to arrive at that place at that time. So long as all goes well. If there's a delay, at times there's a delay. So same thing goes in the kingdom of God. Your heavenly father, he has destined you. That means that he has got your, your life is planned out. Now it's not to say that Everything that happens in your life is meant to happen and is going to happen. You get this. But he has got air tickets booked for you, if I can say that in a simple way. Where he says, okay, my son, my daughter, I'd love. This is the place where they need to go to. This is the thing they ought to do. He's pre-planned it. You understand this. But the enemy is there and he fights against your destiny to destroy it. To try and put you off of the destiny, off of the destination which God has got planned for you. To take you on another route. That's why at times, you know, like if you use a GPS or, you know, you use your Google Maps, they're driving around. At times it has to reroute, <laughs> you understand, because you went off course. That's when someone goes off their destiny. Now you need the Holy Spirit to come and reroute you back onto your, your, your track. Okay, so let's get into the word. This is destiny, pre-planned. I'll show you from scriptures, Isaiah you know, we can say there's a general thing, yes, to the light of the world, God wants you to shine. But each specific person, you have a destination where you ought to go to. It might be a particular country where you will receive more favor. It might be to meet a particular person, marry a particular person. It might be to get into a particular kind of field, industry, whatever it is, it's your destiny. You might be destined to be a sportsman, destined to be a businessman, destined to be a preacher, destined to be a singer, whatever you're destined to be. You have to pursue your destiny. Okay, so let's look here. Isaiah 46, right? Right, I'll take it from verse number 9. It says, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. That is destined. 
declaring the end from the beginning. For, right? And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Hallelujah. Calling a raven a spirit from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I also, I will also do it. So look at that. Right there in Isaiah 46, 9 to 11, there, the Lord says that he calls the end from the beginning. So it's like a director of a movie. He knows how the movie ends. So the Lord knows how your life story ends. You, you understand this? He knows the path you ought to walk in. Psalm 1611 says that you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. You get this. So your destiny is a place of joy. If you see the sorrow in your life, you're not walking in your destiny. You know, when you're walking in your destiny, you'll be filled with joy. You'll be like, this is what I was called to do. This is what I was created to do. You'll just be so happy. I'm not saying that at times there might not be challenges in that thing, but you'll feel a sense of peace and you'll feel a sense of achievement. You know, if you're destined to be a preacher, but you're going around trying to just... Uh, make money, not saying a preacher can't make money, but you're focusing more on that than you are on your call and your destiny of preaching the gospel, then you know what will happen? You will not have the fullness of joy. Somewhere, somewhere you feel like something is missing up until you get into that your true destiny, which is the plan, the path which God has purposed for you to walk on. I remember the story of one man of God and he told, and he's a preacher, and he was like, he was a doctor, successful doctor, qualified, whatever you, you call it with distinctions and all that kind of thing, class one and all that, right? And his dad was so happy and his dad would always speak about it. Oh, you see my son, the doctor, you see my son, the doctor. And he'll always speak about him and all this kind of thing. But then he himself, he felt the call of God so strong upon his life. And he was like, this doctor thing, I don't like it. He just studied hard and did all that kind of thing. Then eventually he left the medical profession and took even some of his friends with him. And now he's a traveling evangelist. Took some of his doctors with him and they also joined him in ministry. And that's when he felt fulfilled. And he felt that he is now truly walking in his destiny, walking in his core. So it's very important to be in the right place because it's not just about being successful. You can be successful but in the wrong destiny. You need to be successful in the right destiny. And what is the right destiny? The one where your heavenly father says, I already know your story. I call the end from the beginning. When he says they're calling, he says, remember the former things of old, for I am God. So he's saying, look at the past, look at the history and see what I said happened. See what I planned happened. He said it to Abraham. He said, look at the stars and all that. And so shall your descendants be. And it has happened now because we are all children of God. We are all, you know, we are the seed of, or, or I mean, we are, we are that seed which Christ spoke about, which the Lord spoke about to Abraham, isn't it? Let's have a look at one of those things because he said, remember the former things. So he's saying, go back and look at the stuff I spoke about. Look at what happened and see that I am God. And that is Genesis 15, which I want us to read, where Abraham, before even the Israelites came out and all that, before he even knew how many kids he'd have and all that, he received a prophecy. What is a prophecy? A prophecy is foretelling what is going to happen, which is basically telling you destiny. That's why even myself, maybe one day if God says I should do it, I'll do it here live on Facebook where I'll prophesy to people and all that kind of thing, which I can do, which is not difficult. Even you can do it because we hear the voice of God, which is basically seeing and speaking what we see in the spirit for your life, for your purpose. Like I see, I see someone traveling something. <laughs> okay, let me stick with the word. That's for another day. Okay, so Genesis 15, right? Verse number 12. This was Abraham. After he gave an offering to God. Remember the last time I spoke about honor? Okay, that's enough. You can go back and watch that one. I think it was two weeks back, the word on honor. So yeah, Abraham had just honored God. Then God spoke to him. Isn't that amazing? It says, and when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto him, No of a surety, that's the Lord said to Abram, said, No of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. That's a prophecy. That's destiny. Verse 14. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And you shall go to your fathers in peace and shall be buried in a good old age. So look at that. This was 
But okay, there we go. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. Right, right, right. He spoke, he spoke all of that. But what I want you to see, what I want you to see, this was even before he had uh, he had fully seen the promise of God. But he was told that his seed are going to be in a certain nation. They're going to be afflicted 400 years. But he said, afterwards, I will judge that nation. And that nation was Egypt. And he said, they'll come out with great spoils. So that's something like prophecy, which we can speak. Where we say, this is what God has planned. This is the story that has been told. You know, like I love that one song, which says, write your story on my heart. So God has written his story on your heart. Right? So your destiny is written. If you try and fight, you know, that's like being Saul. Saul, he was fighting against his call of God, persecuting Christians, but he was created and called to preach the gospel. That's why when Jesus came to him, he said, it's hard for you to kick against the prick. So you are saying to Saul, you are going against your call, you are going against your destiny, you are a preacher of the gospel, go and see Ananias and he'll give you a prophetic word and tell you what I've just told. And that's when Paul, he ran with the gospel like no man's business. So at times people are frustrated because they are in the wrong path. You're walking in the bush. The enemy has taken you off your smooth, cleared road. That's why roads are made. So you get to your destination easily. So the Lord, he says, I make a way in the wilderness. So if the enemy has taken you out and put you in the bush, you're in the wrong destiny. Just know that the Holy Spirit, the Lord who is your shepherd, he'll guide you back onto your path, onto your destiny, which you ought to follow, which is in Christ. And then it will be easy. It will be simple. And you'll be flowing and you'll see joy, isn't it? So this was a prophetic word I'm showing. I can show you so many things here where the Lord spoke things, even the prophecies of Jesus. All that is destiny. That's why when Jesus came and said, today the scripture is fulfilled to you, isn't it? When he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel and, and to heal the sick, to, you know, I'm just paraphrased, to open up the blind eyes, isn't it? And all that kind of thing. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord, isn't it? That's Luke chapter 4. So there Jesus was explaining to say, this is the destiny that was spoken of. I'm now walking in that destiny. I'm fulfilling it. So realize the Lord has good plans for your life, isn't it? As he said in Jeremiah 29, 11, plans to prosper you and give you an expected end, which is a good end, isn't it? So he, your destiny, if you meet an obstacle or a speed bump, like you meant to get on that bus to get to that journey, maybe the bus breaks down. It doesn't mean you're not going to get to your destiny. They can bring the mechanic, fix the past, and you get to your destiny. So at times in life, your call of God, maybe you feel like something's delaying or whatever, you will still get there. You know, at times I've gotten to places, we go out in the rural areas preaching the gospel there. You know, one time we got stuck in the mud and we're like, are we going to reach our destiny? But we get to, you know, get the team together, <laughs> put all the, the, the grass and all that under the tires, wheels of the car and all that and push and shove and get out of the rain and get out of the mud and we eventually we got what we got to our destination so we were a bit delayed but we were still in our destiny we we're still in our path so god is not about delay he is going to push you at the right place you know at times when you fly you have to connect flights isn't it he's going to keep you that when you meet that person it's the right time the next thing is the right time connecting 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 so that you reach to achieve fully what he has called you for and live that blessed and choice life. Let's have a look at Jeremiah. This is destiny. I tell you, as you hear this word, confusion is going in your life. There will be no confusion. You will never be like, what am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? No, watch as the Spirit of God lines up and puts you in the right place. Amen. No delays. We are against delays here. Yeah. No delays. You know, it's nothing like when you wait and a flight is delayed. No delays for your flight. No delays for your schedule. No delays working with God. We have Jeremiah. Look at this. Jeremiah, uh, he received a word from the Lord. Let's see it. Jeremiah 1 verse 4. It says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet Unto the nations. Wow. Look at that. So Jeremiah the Lord told him. Before I formed you in your mother's womb. Not to say when your mother conceived you. Can you see that? Because you'll think to say. Someone is birthed from. When the natural comes in. The natural flesh. No he's saying before I formed you. That's so amazing isn't it? So he says before I formed you in your mother's womb. I knew you. 
So Jer- and he says, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet. So it means in the spirit, already Jeremiah was there as a prophet. That's why even the Lord, he saw all Moses and all of them when he was speaking to Abraham. Moses was already there. Aaron was already there, already in the spirit. And the Lord already knew them, isn't it? And that's when he then formed them uh, in the mother's womb and they were, they were birthed, isn't it? So he's saying to Jeremiah. So if he said it to Jeremiah, the same applies to me, the same applies to you. That before, you might say my parents, they said I was a mistake or I didn't know my parents. No, it's not about that. It's your, your father, the Lord, your maker, is the one who created you. That's why the abortion is not of God. You get that? It's absolutely not of him. Because he is not so concerned about how someone comes, but he's concerned about he's brought life into the world, isn't it? He's brought life. Because this thing of abortion is just the same thing which happened in Exodus, where they tried to get rid of Moses, because they knew somewhere here there's a deliverer, the enemy didn't know who, and he decided to try and kill all. Same thing happened when Jesus came. Jesus was born. They said, hey, there's one who's born king. We're looking for him. He said, oh, is it? There's a king. He said, all right, let me kill all. Kill all the children. Trying to get to the one who was destined to be a king. Like Moses, the one who was destined to be a deliverer. And the enemy never managed to touch it. So abortion is just like the devil trying to say, hey, somewhere, somewhere here, there's a prophet of God. Somewhere, somewhere here, there's someone who's going to bless this world. We need to kill all these children. <clears throat> you get this? Because it doesn't matter how small a life is. Because that life is impacted with the power and the greatness of the Lord Jesus Christ. With a purpose. <laughs> Which can't die. You understand this? Just a baby. Can you imagine how the enemy is so afraid? Just a baby. Even an orphaned child. So afraid. That should show you something that it doesn't matter what background you come from. It doesn't matter who your mother was, who your father was, or whether they knew you or didn't know you, because you yourself, the life you carry, wow, Jesus, you are a gift from the Most High, and you have a path which you are destined to shine. A path, the Word of God says, the path of the righteous is as the bright shining of the day. It shines bright and bright and pearl till the perfect day. So that's how your life is with God. It's just like when the sun rises and gets up. It's just upward and forward only. This is your destiny, I tell you. You, you are shining, you are increasing, you are seeing glory. Know that just as how Jeremiah was told, you are a prophet. The Lord, before you were even born, before you even made any mistake, he called you an apostle. He called you a doctor. He called you a businessman. He called you a deliverer. He called you a healer. He called you a a savior. He called you a problem solver. He called you, you know, an architect. He called you a sports person. He called you a motivator. You might say, I need motivating myself. He'll call you the motivator, the comedian, whatever it is called you into TV, called you to change industries, you get this, called you into prosperity, this is where you are called for. Amen. And he will break it down that you walk in your exact path. And as much as you're called to be a light in the world, but be in the exact path. That's why in every industry, there's different fields. You get this. In every, even in a church, there's different offices, different functions. So, walk in your office. Walk in your destiny. Don't delay it because you'll be delaying yourself. If you call to be that, even if it seems like a small job, but you're helping, that in that place, you, you might be small, but in your proper area, you are big in your destiny. Or be big given in that what seems to be a small thing. Something like ushering, greeting people. You can be called to do that. Do that with excellence. You can be a massive uh, businessman uh, making amazing money, but in the church, you're you are an usher, isn't it? but you are still in your destiny. So never look down upon small things, isn't it? So let's keep flowing because you are created. Hallelujah. You are created to shine. You are created for this. And the Father has declared that you are going to walk in these good things. Isaiah 42 verse 9, right? He says, Behold, the former things are come to pass and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is why I'm saying you can never be in darkness, you can never be lost, you can never be confused. Do you understand this? You can never ever be confused. You get this? You cannot be confused because before something happens in your life, the Lord is going to what? He's going to tell you about it. He's going to tell you about it. That's why I say to you, whenever a prophecy comes to someone, somewhere inside of him, there was a longing for that place, or there's a connection which confirms 
it can't be just something out of the blue. If it's out of the blue, then when they get it, they'll realize, oh yeah, but actually this seems like something I would like to do. You get this. So he says, before something happens, I'm going to tell you, isn't it? He's going to give you new things, not just a boring life. That's why Christianity is not boring. It's exciting because there's always new things which, which happen, isn't it? There's always something amazing, something new which the father can do. You know, he's just a good, good daddy. Let's have a look at Ephesians. We're speaking about destiny. This is the path. This is the direction where you are created to walk in. Ephesians 2, verse 10. It says, for we are his workmanship. Look at this. Remember, Jeremiah was told, before I formed you. You know, the workmanship like this uh, Bible is published by, whoever is published by, right? But this is the, the workmanship of the printer of this Bible. You understand this. So before they put their label on this thing, they make sure everything is intact and working well, and then they send it out, isn't it? To say, this is our product. You get this? The label saying, this is our workmanship. Whatever, whatever, publication. Like I've got my books which I've written, the Word of Truth publications. I put that on there to say, right, this is my workmanship, and I send it out with my name on it. You get this? So they know, oh, this is Jason Pullen. This is the Word of Truth publication. Okay, so this is his workmanship. When you get it, I say, yes, that's my stuff. That's my product, isn't it? So the word of God, here, Ephesians 2.10 says, we are his workmanship. That's why I said, look how the enemy was afraid of a baby. <laughs> a little baby, even a baby without even anyone to provide or care for the baby. Just a baby. Just a child. Because he knows this is a product of God. So you are destined, child of God. You are a product of the Most High. You know those products don't fail. Can you imagine if you just see a, a Ferrari parked on the outside with the keys in it? You, you'll never see that Ferrari like crying to say, Ish, who's going to drive me? I tell you, if the police are not the first to get there to drive that car and take it and say, okay, we, we're claiming this uh, as unclaimed property, we'll just keep it <laughs> for Sunday drives up until the owner comes and claim it, isn't it? Or something like that. So that's a Ferrari. So what I'm saying is something desirable, something which is high quality, no, no, just abandon it, isn't it? Because they see the goodness in it. So you are the workmanship of the Most High God. Workmanship of the Most High God. More valuable than a Ferrari, more valuable than a Lamborghini, more valuable than the latest iPhone, which someone can pick up on the floor, whatever it is. That's how valuable you are. You get this? That's how valuable you are. It says, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So for good works, so you are created for good works. Like our Ferrari is created for some nice, comfortable and fast driving. You are created to do the works of God for good works, onto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Look at that. Before ordained, ordained is like, you know, bestowed upon, you know. He's named something like, you know, like a bus driver is qualified and whatever to drive that bus. The pilot is qualified and whatever to fly that pilot. You know, they get qualified. So ordaining is even like, it's like, you know, it's a spiritual thing. It's like putting you in office, in that place. Like how you ordain pastors, you ordain prophets. So the Lord has already ordained his ministers, his servants. What happens here is just a replay of what has already happened in the spirit. We say, okay, now we ordain you as the pastor. We ordain you as the prophet. It's just a confirmation for the people to see, man. The Lord has already in the spirit called someone and ordained them for that office. Isn't it? And that's the destiny which we walk in. You are ordained, anointed for wealth, anointed to prosper, anointed to bring joy to people, anointed to be a father, ordained for such a time as this, isn't it? You are created for that kind of thing, created for that kind of thing. The Father has already declared all these things for us, and this is the life which He wants us to live a blessed life in our path. Our path, we are not in darkness, isn't it? We are children of the light and children of the day. We are not in darkness. I just want to show you something. You remember when Jesus prayed for Peter? He said, Simon, Simon. Notice he didn't call him Peter. He called him Simon at that time. It's Luke 22. He said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. He says, but I have prayed for you. So what does that mean? It means Peter, remember Jesus said, you are Simon, but I call you Peter. He said, and upon that rock I will build my church. Isn't it? He renamed him and said, upon this faith, this revelation that you have, that I'm Christ, I'll build my church. I'll build my called out ones. Right? And then, just before, he, later on in, the, in his ministerial journey, he said to Peter, Simon, Simon. So he called him by his old name, showing old nature, and said, look, the enemy has desired to sift you as wheat. 
He's got a plan to take you off your destiny. He says, but I have prayed for you. Isn't it? That you will prevail. Let's read it. Luke 22. Thank you, Father God. Verse 31. It says, and the Lord said, Simon, Satan, si Simon, Simon, behold, Satan. We used to play that game, Simon says. Okay, I don't know where that came from anyway. So he's saying, Simon, Simon. So he's saying, listen, listen. Right. So he's, that, was, that was his name. The meaning of Simon. Okay. So anyway, he says, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Isn't it? This was before. And what he was speaking of was the time he was foreseeing how the enemy was trying to take him off his destiny. Through guilt, condemnation. Because remember, later on, he denied Jesus three times. Because Jesus prophesied. He now saw that to say, okay, this is where I see you, where the enemy is trying to take you permanently off your destiny. Because he denied Jesus with cursing. The Bible says with cursing and swearing. Denied, he said, I don't know the man. I don't know him. I don't. He said, never knew him. Yet he was, at this time, is the time when you're saying, I will never leave you. Even if everyone else is offended, I will not. Then that's when the Lord said, today you will deny me three times before the cock crows. So this was the plan of the enemy to take Peter off his destiny. So at times maybe you've done a mistake, you messed up, you sinned somewhere, whatever, something trying to take you off your destiny. Someone just has a bad, maybe they come into church, then they just go out one night clubbing, get drunk and they screw up and everything, they mess up and then they think, oh, I can't go back to church. But they know their destiny is in the house of God. You get this? So, just one event cannot remove you off the permanent destiny which the Lord has for you. The blood of Jesus Christ is too great and too strong. Like I always say, it's more powerful than any sin in your life. The blood of Jesus Christ is more powerful, it's more valuable and washes away every sin. Isn't it? So Simon had his sins washed away. He was forgiven from this thing. Simon Peter, right? And he continued. That's why on the day of Pentecost, Acts, we see it. That was his destiny. He was destined to lead this revival. He stood up and he said, this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Job. So he now said, this is the destiny, guys, of what was spoken of, of what's going to happen when the Lord said, he will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And that's what happened with the all filled with the Holy Ghost. When they said, oh, these guys are drunk. He said, no, they're not drunk as you suppose, but they are filled with the spirit of God, isn't it? So your life, if you ever make a blunder, mistake somewhere, don't throw away your whole destiny. Be restored. Hallelujah. Be restored in your core. Be restored in your work with Christ. Be restored. If your business fails, don't say, oh, I'm giving up. I'm not a businessman. I'm not called for wealth. I'm not called for this thing. I better try something else. Just be a teacher or something. No. You get straight back on because that's what you're destined for, isn't it? Joseph was destined to rule the world. Joseph the dreamer. And he never forgot about it. I believe he never forgot about it. Even though he went to become a slave, went to become a prisoner, but he saw his destiny in his dreams. The Lord gave him dreams to show him that's your destiny. So I'm saying to you, what has God said to you? That's your destiny. Maybe he gave you a vision, gave you a prophecy, gave you a dream. Don't back down from it. Keep on going because he is the one who planned it. You never planned it. He created you, he formed you. So you have to say, Lord, do what you said you will do. Amen. Do what you said you will do. It's not your effort. You just have to say, okay, I'm here. I'm jumping on the plane. That's it. That's your destiny. Do what he says you should do. That's the only thing. Do what he says you should do. And you see, you flow in your destiny, right? Let's have a look here at um, Romans 8. I'm closing up now. Romans 8. This is just a word to, to push you in your destiny. Amen. Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So all things work together for good to those who love God. If you love God, it means anything, whatever happens, it makes it work together for good, isn't it? Like even Peter there, where he messed up, denied Christ. Not saying we wouldn't have denied him, maybe we would have even run away and not even stood to follow behind him because Peter had the guts to go and follow behind Jesus, isn't it? As he was being led away to be uh, crucified and all that. So it says, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So called according to his purpose. So your destiny, it joins up with the master plan of God. It says, for whom he did foreknow. What is foreknowing? He knows you before you even, before you were even born. 
So he's saying, whom he did for no, that's you and me. Like even remember he said to Philip, I think it was, he said, ah, I saw you under the fig tree. And under, under the fig trees before whoever it was called you. And then he said, you're the son of God. Then he said, you'll see greater things than this. You get this? So this is one of the things. He already knows you before you know him. So we are those people who he created. It says, for whom he did for no, he also did predestinate. So that is predestination, meaning that your path, your life journey is already mapped out and set out. What the Lord wants you to do, where you ought to be, is pre, yeah, it is. It says he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, to be like Jesus, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? So if God is for you and the destiny which he has for you, who can be against the destiny which he has for you? It's only you. When I, every time I read this, question, this scripture, because it leaves with a question mark, I think it's only you. How can you even be against yourself? You can't. If God before us, who can be against us? It's a question mark. Who can be against us? Whoever tries to be against us, who can really be against us? We can't be against ourselves. If God before us, who can be against us? That means your destiny. It just has to come to pass. It says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Hallelujah. So he'll give you that which you ask for. And remember that he says that um, he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord also, and he'll give you out the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So this is the word for you for today. God is on your side. He's for you. Who can be against you? I don't know who can be against you. Basically, it means whoever, anyone can be against you, but the question is, who can be against you? Meaning like, who will win being against you? Who will win being against your testimony? Who will win being against what God called you for? You know, at times you hear testimonies of some people who like, I was running from God and I tried doing this, I did all kinds of darkness. And you hear these testimonies and you be like, then they're like, I always knew God called me. And then eventually I realized I submitted and now I'm living the life and I want to thank God for setting me free from the world and darkness and this kind of thing. But you know, why put yourself through all that nonsense when you realize at the end of it all that He is your light. You get this? He is your light. Someone fighting the call of God. You cannot fight the call of God. You know, why should you fight the call of God? Just respond to Him, isn't it? Respond to Him. Walk in your test and it's easy. Like Saul was told, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. You say, Saul, Saul, you're running into a brick wall. Come this way, open the door. And then the Lord will lift you up and help you out. So that's what I'm saying to you. Don't keep on banging on a, on a, on a brick wall there. Just walk in the path. Don't be walking in the wilderness in the bush. Get into your destiny. Get into your path. If you're on your destiny, on your path, know that the Lord is with you there. He's your shepherd and he's going to just show you good things. Like he says in Jeremiah 29, 11, he knows the plans he has for you. So this is your destiny. This is your plan. You're destined to be just like Jesus to the world, a light shining with glory and a gift. Hallelujah. I love you so much, but the Father loves you even more. Just like, follow, share, subscribe. If you want to contact me, the link in the, in the video to follow. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. And God bless you.